Hey Bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me. It feels like it's been ages since I shared a great everyday hand lotion. This soft oat moisturizing hand lotion definitely fits the bill. It's silky smooth, fast absorbing, and leaves my hands feeling powdery soft and richly moisturized. The heated water phase for this formulation is quite simple with just three ingredients. You'll need 68.4 grams of distilled water, eight grams of moisturizing vegetable glycerin, and one gram of soothing moisturizing panthenol, also known as vitamin B5. My panthenol is powdered. If yours is liquid, you'll need to use more. Check with your supplier to see how concentrated your liquid panthenol is, but 50% seems to be pretty standard. So if that's the case, you would need to use twice as much, reducing the distilled water to make room for it. I found conflicting information about whether or not liquid panthenol is heat stable. So check with your supplier for what you have and go with what they say. And so if it needs to be moved to the cool down phase, do that. The heated oil phase contains a selection of my favorite emollients and one of my favorite long-standing emulsifiers. You'll need 3.5 grams of Reed Emuls SC and this is our natural emulsifier. It's one of the first emulsifiers that I used and I love how powdery soft it makes my skin feel. If you don't have Reed Emuls SCG, you could use a different self-thickening emulsifying wax instead, like Olive M1000 for a natural alternative or emulsifying wax Anna. Our star emollients are four grams of each lightweight isoamyl cocoate and rich creamy shea butter. If you don't have isoamyl cocoate, you could use a different lightweight plant ester like coco caprolate or isoamylorate, or you could just use a lightweight liquid oil. Three grams of cetyl alcohol adds some body to the emulsion, boosts emollients, and brings its characteristic silky, slippy goodness to the equation. The last two ingredients in our heated oil phase are water soluble, and I've put them in the oil phase because they can't clump there. Two grams of colloidal oatmeal boosts the moisturizing, skin-soothing properties of the formulation. And 0.1 grams of soft xanthan gum boosts the viscosity just a wee bit and adds a titch of extra slip that is really lovely. If you don't have soft xanthan gum, you can use regular old xanthan gum instead. If you are looking for more information about this formula, as always, please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below. It contains information about substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all of the ingredients, more information on all of the ingredients, and just a whole heck of a lot more. So it's definitely worth a click. To make this soft oat moisturizing hand lotion, begin by combining the ingredients for the heated oil phase and the heated water phase in two separate heat resistant glass measuring cups or beakers. Weigh the beaker containing the water phase and note that weight. This will allow us to replace any water that is lost to evaporation during heating. Heat both phases through using a water bath. So simply take a wide flat bottom pan that can hold both of your beakers or measuring cups, pop that on your stovetop, add about an inch or three centimeters of water, put your two phases into the pan with the water and turn the heat on to about medium low. What we're looking for is the water to be hot enough to be steaming, to you know, melt everything and heat everything up, but not so active that it starts chucking the beakers around at a low boil. Once the Redemals SCG, Subtle Alcohol and Shea Butter have melted and both phases have heated through, we are ready to proceed. Remember that the colloidal oatmeal and the xanthan gum aren't going to melt or dissolve in the heated oil phase and that is totally okay. Remove your beakers from the water bath and weigh your heated water phase. Refer back to the number that you wrote down earlier and add just enough preheated distilled water to bring the weight of the water phase back up to what it was before we heated it up. Pour the water phase into the oil phase, stir to combine, and then grab your immersion blender. Blend the emulsion for about a minute and then switch to hand stirring. Continue stirring until the lotion has gained some viscosity, at which point you can reduce the frequency of your stirring and kind of set the emulsion aside and weigh out your cool down phase. For starters, you'll need one and a half grams of Optifin Plus, and this is our preservative. If you would like to use a different preservative, I've written an entire FAQ on things to think through for doing that, so check it out over at humblebeeandme.com slash FAQ. 0.3 grams of Elantoin adds further skin soothing moisturizing benefits. Elantoin is only water soluble to about half a percent, and so I have calculated the amount of Elantoin to be soluble in the amount of water that's present in this formulation. I've never had any issues with Elantoin feeling shardy in formulations when calculated this way. If you'd like to learn more, please make sure you look it up in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia. Two grams of hydrolyzed quinoa protein boosts the moisturizing properties of this formulation even more. Two grams of oil soluble oat extract for even more skin soothing, moisturizing, oaty goodness. If you don't have this oat extract, you could use a different extract that your skin loves instead oil soluble or water soluble will work. And lastly, 0.2 grams of vitamin E. Incorporate the cool down phase into your emulsion by adding a dollop of the now cooled emulsion to the dish containing your cool down phase. Whisk to combine until nice and smoothy smooth, and then scrape that back into the parent emulsion and stir to combine. Before we package this lovely OT lotion up, 
we need to check its pH to make sure it's in a good place for our preservative. Optifin Plus works best in formulations with a pH below 6. To check the pH of this emulsion, the first thing we'll need to do is create a 10% dilution of it by weighing 2 grams of emulsion and 18 grams of distilled water into a small dish or beaker and whisking to combine. Use your pH meter to check the pH of your solution. You can learn more about the pH meter that I have in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia in the equipment section. If you've made this formulation the same way that I have, you should get a pH somewhere around 5.5 to 5.75. If it is higher than 6, you'll want to lower it, and if it is lower than 4.5, you'll want to raise it. For more information about testing and adjusting the pH of our formulations, please refer to the linked resources that I've included in the partner blog post. Now that we know the pH is in a happy place for our preservative and for our skin, it's time to package it up. I used a 100 milliliter soft squeeze tube from Yellow Bee, which was a gift, filling it with a large needleless syringe. These are sometimes sold as catheter tip syringes. It's really helpful to squeeze as much air as possible out of the tube before filling it and between each sort of plunge of the syringe to avoid messy lotion blowouts. And if you find your syringe is being really uncooperative, you might need a new plunger. I was finding it really difficult to work the plunger into the syringe as the rubber gasket had swollen and misshapen after years of use, but replacing it with a new plunger fixed that frustration immediately. Once the lotion's in the tube, you are done. This hand lotion should easily last a year or two, but I think you'll finish it before then. If you would like to learn more about subtle alcohol, click here. And if you would like to learn about some lotion myths that maybe you believe in, you should stop believing, click here. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.